Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the B2B Influencer Marketing Chat Series. My name is Mariska Kestelo and I'm the founder of Word of Mice. And today we have another interesting, interesting chat series, um, of course, with another fantastic uh, host. But before we proceed, I would like to introduce you to my to my colleague um, Jaro before we start uh, we start with the interview. Jaro, would you like to share anything before we start with the session? Hello, nice to hear you, nice to see you. My name is Jaroslav Marjuk and I come from the same town as Anna Gorska, our host today. And I think it's a great opportunity to have some news from this part of the world. And I must say that Anna started a great project and was uh, doing a great job for convention bureaus in Poland. But I think that Anna will tell us more about it, what she's doing right now. So okay. over to you, Mariska. Okay, well, thank you so much, uh, Jaro. Um, Anna, Anna Gorska, welcome. Um, as being part of our B2B Influencer Marketing Chat Series. Thank you so much for your time. Before we dive into the topics of today, would you like to share anything about your background, um, um, about your experience, and of course your passion about the meetings and events industry? Uh, yes, uh, first of all, thank you very much, Mariska and Yara, for inviting me to take part in this chat. And it's always a pleasure to see an old friend, Yaro. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So I have been involved in the meetings industry for over 20 years, working in different sectors. I was a sales coordinator in the hotel in Gdańsk, in Poland. Uh, I was the president of the Convention Bureau of Gdańsk and Gdańsk Tourism Organization. I was a business development director working for the venue in Warsaw and a board advisor in the leading Polish PCO. My speciality is working with the potential destination ambassadors who are the representatives of the international associations and to help them uh, to organize business events in Poland. Uh, as you said, I'm very passionate about the meetings industry. And this is why I have been also involved voluntarily in national and inter international associations for many years. Uh, previously in MPI and right now, among the others, in ICA where recently I have been elected as one of the board of directors representing meetings management sector. Uh, on the national level right now, I'm a vice pre president of the Polish Conference and Congress Association. And I also teach students uh, about the meetings industry. So this is about me. <laughs> so, well, it's clearly from your CV and from your background that you have a huge passion for, for our industry and also a very impressive um, CV working also for, for different parts of the industry, also from a convention bureau perspective. So I can say that you are a true advisor or ambassador and perhaps even better said, a true influencer for the destination of, of, of Poland. Um, you were just mentioning already um, ICA. Perhaps there are people who don't know what ICA is, which I suppose the majority does. But um, can you share something about your role in ICA and also about the ICA conference that took place um, that took place this year? Um, mm -hmm. Can you share any say any insights why this conference was also so special? Uh, yes, of course. Well, ICA is International Conference and Congress Association. Uh, right now, uh, it has over 1,000 members from all over the world. And, and I think it's the most important organization dealing with the meetings industry in the world right now. So uh, ICA organizes its Congress every year, and it takes place in a different part of the world every year. And in fact, every year, uh, many cities try to bid for it to be a host of this event because it's a very prestigious event. So uh, every year it gathers up to 1,000 people from the top meetings, from, from the top management of the uh, members. This year, the title of the Congress was Transforming Events Together. And uh, it was scheduled to be hosted by the Cushing in Taipei in Asia. But due to the COVID, the board 
of ICA decided to organize it for the first time ever in a different form, in a hybrid format. So except of the Cushing, there were seven other regional hubs chosen in a different parts of the world where the members could meet face to face. For example, in Europe, there were in Luxembourg and Malaga. So the hubs were chosen so the delegates from all around, all over the world uh, need, don't, do not, did, didn't have to travel so far, but could choose the close place to their homes. So you could also have an option to participate virtually. And thanks to that, it hit a record in number of attendees. There were 1,500 participants. Mm -hmm. uh, ICA also offered a six-week educational program before the actual start of the Congress. So for the registered participants, there were sessions every day on the topics like storytelling, macro and micro trends. And the sessions are still available on demand until the end of the 2020. So I think it's a future of the meetings uh, because the hybrid way, because it gives you an opportunity to participate either face to face or virtually in case when you don't have time, money or other sources to travel far away. Yeah, I think also that's the way how we how we should move forward in these I say uh, in these uh, challenging uh, times. But ICA also had a hub in in Poland, correct? Uh, besides having a hub in Malaga and Luxembourg. No, no, we didn't have a hub in Poland. Ah, you didn't have a hub in Poland. Okay, okay. But so you... next year the congress is scheduled to be uh, organized in Colombia. So we all hope that we will be able to travel <laughs> freely until the November 2021. Yeah, well, I think South America is also still on my uh, on my bucket list. So uh, it would be a pleasure to meet you there um, face to face, um, Anna. Um, mm. Which is, I think, it's also interesting of this hybrid of this hybrid version. I think it was the first time that uh, the education was that you could also see the education after the conference. Um, because yes, I and, and I think it's very convenient uh, because you can go back to it uh, whenever you want. Uh, and uh, I think it's also um, a positive way of the um, way uh, the COVID uh, left us with the conferences. Uh, and it will stay with us, this way of sessions on demand. Yes. So you mm -hmm. can go back to them. Yeah, yeah, because as you're also very passionate about education, you were telling also in your introduction that you're teaching students. So I think education is is very important also for the ICA community. So I hope that there will be more education about uh, associations, about bidding, or any other related uh, any other related topic. So I think it's a it's a great way it's a great way forward, and I'm really curious how. Um, the conference or in what way the conference in 2021 will take place in, in South America, in Cartagena, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, you are very passionate about associations and associations is in our industry also known as an audience that is difficult to reach and difficult to get in touch with. Um, you have a lot of experience about, uh, about the association market can can you give any insights or um, about this particular say about this particular market about this particular audience? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, first of all, we need to un underline, I think, that for many associations, the annual congress is the main source of their income. So uh, during the pandemic, during the COVID crisis, uh, when the event has to be cancelled or postponed, it's a problem for the association. In many cases, the leaders of the associations work voluntarily. So they have their own business issues to deal with now, and it's hard to concentrate for them on the association's markets. I think this, this is the biggest challenge uh, all associations are facing now. And of course, uncertainty is mm -hmm. the main problem. We don't know when we'll be able to meet face to face again and travel again freely. 
So this is also a very big challenge. Uh, others uh, are like remote work or organizing a virtual meetings. Associations do not have experience with this. So I think it would be reasonable for them to use, uh, to outsource uh, this and use uh, sometimes experience of the PCOs to help them organize virtual meetings. So in my opinion right now, the most important is to stay connected with the members and to offer them an open communication and just examine their needs. Just mm -hmm. ask them what they need right now because uh, all of our priorities changed. And what was good for the members last year probably is not good right now. So we need to learn to adopt to the members' needs. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's, it's the most important right now for all national, for medical and industry associations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're abs absolutely, absolutely right. Uh, associations have a very fragile uh, structure. And like you said, they're based on volunteers. Those volunteers perhaps may run their own company or are employees. Also, yeah. there has a lot of things has changed. We're now working from home. Perhaps also personal situations have changed. Um, your working environment has changed, so we are facing a lot of a lot of challenges, of course, and it has a huge effect on the on the quality and also on the role of uh, associations. And the second, what you mentioned, is the online experience. Yeah, if you are working as a volunteer in an association, that doesn't mean that you're directly an online event strategist or online um, event event planner. Mm -hmm. And also, as we're living such a ever-changing environment, what do we need now today is perhaps different than we would need in a week or in, in, a, in a month's time. So it is really a very, I say, a very challenging, uh, not only for us, uh, as we're speaking here, a very challenging world, but of course, um, yeah, an ever-changing uh, environment. Um, you say you reach out to, to members, you give the advice to reach out to your members, um, just pick up the phone and call them or send them or send them a message. Do you have any other advice? How can you stay in touch with, uh, with your members or people that are related or connected with associations? Mm -hmm. uh, I can give you an example of the project we introduced in our Polish Conference and Congress um, Association. In short, we call them, we call it SKKP. So the main goal of SKKP is to educate the members. And last year we introduced a project called SKKP Academy. But uh, of course in March this year, uh, it was obvious that we could not organize any face-to-face -face trainings or educational problem, products. Pro, uh, pro products. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we introduced uh, something new. We in introduced the project called News from the World. It is a series of articles in which we write about the case studies, reports, new promotional campaigns, showing how the world is reaching, is reacting on this unusual and ex unexpected situation. And we uh, make it available to our members and to other industry representatives in Poland. The goal was to help the members to deal with an unexpected crisis by showing them the good examples from the world, because we all know that information is crucial to conduct right decisions and to create a recovery plan. So it also allowed members to react quickly and in, to implement changes in their strategies. So the project was very simple. The articles were spread throughout the social media and we received a very positive impact. The Polish industry media also helped us and they distributed articles through their channels in social media and in their newsletters. So the project was also one of the finalists in the international awards organized by the Association of Association Executives. And we know that uh, industry read it because I can see how they use it in their campaigns, how they use it when they speak uh, to others. So it's very positive 
for us and it makes me motivated more <laughs> mm -hmm. and I decided to continue the project also next year and to write the articles to keep on writing the articles Uh -huh. Okay, great. Can you can you share something? Uh, because you're saying you were sharing uh, case studies or articles. Were it articles also about associations, or were it also um, case studies from companies or news? Can you say something about the type of content that you shared uh, within that uh, within that new initiative? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we shared the reports that appeared uh, in the in the industry. We shared, an, for example, reports issued by ICA or the other associations. Uh, just recently, we shared an index, uh, the third edition of the index conducted by Gaming Edge, an international consulting company. And we also write about the um, good positive examples of the different campaigns. I can share an example of the influencer campaign campaign organized by the in England. It's called It's Time to Meet Again, where uh, the um, employees of the industry uh, took pictures with their smartphones in their workplaces, and then they shared it through the social, their own social media channels. So to show the positive uh, and personal uh, way uh, of the inviting to organize events in their region. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you really chose, because I think this is important for anyone who's creating a new initiative or building up a community. So you really took content from the industry, from the meetings and events industry, um, to share it with, with your members. You didn't share any information from outside, um, say, from outside the meeting and events industry? Uh, no, we share okay. uh, mainly information on the meetings industry. We read uh, articles in the international newspapers, social media, uh, different channels, and we choose what, in our opinion, is important, can be important, and help, can help Polish uh, mm -hmm. industry. Of course, of course. No, but it's important because there is so much information out there and what do you share and what, what you choose not to share. I think that is a very, very important criteria. So therefore, it's important to know that you really, because you know the challenges of your audience, that you were the right person to, to choose and to pick the right articles that were relevant or could be informative or uh For your um, for your audience, um, also um, you. How did you share the, those articles um, with your audience? Did you write a newsletter? Did you create a, a company page on uh, uh, mm -hmm. on Facebook or or what kind of? Uh, how did you or and how frequently did you share that news with your with your audience? Okay, so first we started to write articles twice a week. And now, right now, I write it once a week. And we have on the web page of uh, the Polish uh, association uh, uh, one uh, called News of the World. And this is where we post it every week. Okay. Other than that, I post it on my personal uh, Facebook profile and LinkedIn profile. And we share it also on the social media, uh, on Facebook of our Polish association. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I can see, the others also share it on their profiles. And uh, also the Polish media, Meeting Planner, PL, Think Mice, and Mice Poland, they also share it. So it, it, it gives an opportunity for the wider audience to read about it. Mm -hmm. And just a practical question, because it's uh, because your audience is from Poland, did you share the information in English or in Polish? No, we translate it into the Polish. The idea ah, okay. is to translate it into the Polish. So it's for the Polish industry. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because I think that's uh, um, because I think it's easier that people read the content and education in their own yeah, say in their yeah. own uh, in their own language. And as you said before, there is so many information, uh, so not many people have time to read all of them. 
So this is also helpful uh, that we choose, of course, from our point of view, what's important and, and share, it, uh, share it so they have the knowledge in one place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think it's important because you have that uh, so many years of experience in the industry. So you know what your audience needs and they trust you as a person and, of course, the association that you won't share anything or, or um, anything that is not related or not interesting. So therefore, I think you are the right person so to choose that information and to share it because you are um, authentic, you are trustworthy, you are uh, seen as, I say, the influencer perhaps within, uh, within, the, within the association. Um, going back, uh, because you shared the, the content also on your private channels, um, on your Facebook and on your LinkedIn, um, what is then your, your, your preferred channel if you would choose between LinkedIn and Facebook or where did you get more reactions on, on Facebook or on the LinkedIn mm-hmm. page? Well, definitely on Facebook, we get more reactions. And I use my personal Facebook uh, channel only for the business related matters. You know, I don't use it for private. I mean, sometimes I do, but only when I want to promote the destination Poland. So I don't show the birthdays of my children and etc. And uh, so, um, and I, I see that in Poland, Facebook, uh, at least for the industry associations as MPI, as AK, SKKP or Site Poland is used more frequently than LinkedIn. And uh, although I also share uh, the articles on the LinkedIn profile, I see much more reaction on the Facebook and also much more Uh, shares uh, on Facebook than on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. (laughs) Has it also to do something, for example, with cultural differences or perhaps with the preferences of your audiences? Uh, Perhaps associations in Poland are more active on Facebook instead of LinkedIn? I think that Polish associations are more active on Facebook than LinkedIn. And that just my friends from Facebook and LinkedIn, they are more active on, on Facebook. I can see it. And uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's a Polish thing. Maybe not. Yeah, it can be. But, but it's important to know because we, we've spoken uh, with many people uh, during our, um, our, say, our live webinars with different people from around the world. And a lot of people underestimate the cultural differences that are in each country. Um, and also um, that also the rules and regulations, of course, but also cultural differences that in some countries, for example, Twitter is much more used and common in the UK than it would be, for example, in the Netherlands, although we use Twitter, but it's not our place to go to. Um, and sometimes it also depends on the industry. Um, so it also depends on cultural differences, but also on the industry. So it's good to know if I would be if I would work for a Polish association or I would like to target Polish associations, um, then I would know that I would invest more time and effort in Facebook than I would uh, do on, on, on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it, it would be a good idea to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And I know you are involved in so many social channels and profiles. You have so many of them, especially Yaro. But me personally, I use only two of them, only Facebook and LinkedIn, because I just don't have time. And, you know, it, it makes you, it's not so easy to post the right thing on the social media. You have to think about it and about the content and it take, just takes time. So, so I chose to have only two of them. I think it's a very, uh, I think it's a very wise decision to only choose one or two platforms, maintain those and build the community then to have five or six profiles where you don't have the time to maintain them and where you have a low amount of followers. I think everyone has one platform which is his, his or her preference to go yeah. to and to maintain it and to look for the right articles, content, hashtag, to tag the right people. It's a lot of work and I think that's what a lot of people underestimated. <laughs> um, uh, that, but um, yeah, my preference is, is, is LinkedIn, 
for some people it's uh, for Jaro, of course it's instagram mm -hmm. <laughs> um but um but yeah i think it's a very wise decision to focus only on one on one or two channels um, anything else that you would like to share with us concerning associations for uh, for our listeners or any predictions or suggestions that you would like to give or share with us uh, for 2021 Yes, maybe maybe two things. Uh, I would like to encourage everyone to to get involved in associations, <laughs> and uh, because it gives you, it's of course it takes time, uh, but it also gives you a very positive things uh, to 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 do something good for the others. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I'm so passionate about the associations, and that's why I get involved working with them and uh, about the predictions i think the uh, meetings in the future uh, will be smaller and uh, unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> uh, because a big part of them will be organized virtually and we will need a lot of time uh, we will need a lot of time to to, to feel safe to travel again uh, long distances uh, so the meetings will be smaller and uh, probably more local and then regional. Uh, and we need to learn. Uh, that's why I think we learn. We need to get some new uh, skills uh, to be able to move freely <laughs> in the virtual world. This would be my advice uh, to get new skills. And I I'm also speaking about myself. <laughs> I need to be more proficient uh, in virtual world. It's not easy, but I think what we learn now uh, will give fruits in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. I think you're absolutely right. And also thank you for your advice to get involved in, in an association. Um, as a student or as anyone, I'll say anyone else, I, I've been always been very involved in MPI, which uh, um, which also gave me gave me a lot and uh, a lot of confidence. And so I, I also, from my perspective, I totally agree with you, Anna, to get involved in association if it's within our, within your industry or outside or outside your industry. And indeed, um, use this time to learn new skills, to get more involved in the digital world. Um, I think uh, for a lot of people, it has been a learning curve, not only for event planners, but I think also for a lot of industries outside, how to deal with online meetings, online conferences, and and, and anything say, and anything else. Um, I saw that Jaro had a question. Yes, so if we like to talk about uh, the events industry, Ivana, we, we need to find you first on Facebook, right, Anna? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. I mean, if you'd like to, if, if someone would like to talk to you about the events industry and associations, uh, the person should first find you on Facebook, right? Yes, yes. And you fine. accept the invitation, <laughs> yes? Okay. Yes, of course. <laughs> All right. Okay. Do you have any other, say, any other closing remarks or any other information that you would like to share with us before we, we finish the session? Mm, well, I, I think all of us are influencers uh, in some way. And especially now when we all use, you know, when we live in an online world. So my final uh, remark would be just to take to be cautious what you post on your social media <laughs> i think that's a very well advice for um for all of us uh, indeed and uh, think twice before before you post uh, something because you can might harm or your reputation or your or your followers so um so, yeah. so thank you very much anna for sharing your insights and passion about uh, about the meetings and events industry Thank you, Jaro, for your for your weekly um, support. Next week we have another speaker coming up, and of course we talk about B two B influencer marketing, um, as always related with the meetings and events industry. Every Thursday at one pm Central European time. So thank you so much, and see you next week. Bye.
Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye.